Hello readers, I'm Amy, and today we are discussing The Lady from the Black Lagoon. No, this is not the pretty copy, because it's, a, it's an advanced reader's copy. I did not actually get this as an advanced reader's copy. You could get an ARC if you bought like a certain amount of books at this book sale that I went to, so that's how I got it. So initially, I was going to film this as a review with Hillary from Melted Books, and Unfortunately, for technological reasons, we just really struggled to try and make it work, but I think this book still deserves its own review, even if I can't do it with Hillary. But we both read it, we both absolutely loved it. If you're looking for a really great nonfiction to get into, especially a super feminist nonfiction, you'll want to pick this book up. I think it's gonna stay this time. So, The Lady from the Black Lagoon, Hollywood Monsters, and the Lost Legacy of Millicent Patrick. This was written by Mallory O'Meara, who I totally want to meet and be friends with now because she sounds amazing. Um, obviously has some inspiration from Mary Roach because she's got all of these footnotes that really show her personality and her, like, wittiness. And then I saw a picture of Mallory O'Meara with her bookshelves on Instagram, and she has all of Mary Roach's books, which just speaks to my own little... Mary Roach nerd heart. So if you like Mary Roach, you might like this book. This is talking about Millicent Patrick. So we are looking at Millicent's life and how she's really kind of an unknown person. She designed, designed this really famous monster, the creature from the Black Lagoon, but no one knows her as the designer. They think this other guy designed it. And she's talking about how that happened. How did she come to be forgotten? How did we come to think that this man designed this monster rather than this woman? And this book is also interspersed a lot with looks at Omira's own personal life as she re researches Millicent's life. So a lot of this book was kind of filler, like it wasn't just Millicent Patrick. Maybe half the book was about her and the other half was on Omira's own life, how she related to Patrick, how she understood what she was going through, about her research on Millicent Patrick and how it was hard to find anything about her. But even though it had a lot of that filler stuff, I really liked that. I thought Omira's personal life was really interesting. I loved seeing how she connected with Millicent Patrick and her admiration for Millicent Patrick. And in this whole book, you just really get this sense. You, you get to feel just how excited Omira is about Patrick and how much she loves Patrick and how she's just her hero. And that's the other thing, is this idea that a woman has to be a superhero to get anywhere. She's looking at Millicent Patrick's life and she's like, Millicent was a regular woman. She was just going around doing her artistic thing and she got to create this amazing monster. And Omira's just like, she, she wasn't a superwoman. And she did make mistakes in her life. And I wanted to gloss over that, but I didn't because it's on me to show this woman for the human that she is. She has to be her regular self because she was able to make it. That doesn't make her better than anyone. That doesn't mean that she worked harder than anyone else. That just means she had some good luck. She had some good chances. <sighs> There's this idea that you have to be really, really, really good to get anywhere. A woman has to work twice as hard as a man. A black person has to work like four times as hard. That's not fair. And she addresses this stuff in this book. And then just the feminist part of this. Like, Omira, you're a woman after my own heart. Ugh. She's just... I, I loved how she, like, just takes a bite of the patriarchy and she's just... Mm, it was so good. It was so good. I don't even know how to talk about it right now. I loved this book. Um, most of the issues with the book that I had were kind of in writing. Like, for one thing, I don't like that the Oxford comma was not used in this book, and that's a really nerdy thing to say. It's a very specific thing to not like about the book, but honestly, all of the stuff that I didn't like it came down to some little things in writing, like the Oxford comma, some odd kind of tone changes from paragraph to paragraph. But honestly, I think that stuff like that will just get better with time, and if Omira decides to write more books from here on out, which actually, Mallory Omira, if you're watching this, please write a book about horror. 
Because if you all don't know, Mallory O'Meara is a film producer and she loves her some horror. She knows all about horror monsters. It's just her love in life. And looking at all of this excitement that she had that came across in this book, talking about Millicent Patrick, I would love to read a book from O'Meara about horror and the film industry because I think that she would make that book, that knowledge, really interesting to the rest of us. This book just goes to show if you're really, really excited about something, you can get other people really excited about something just by being excited about it. This book was a testament to that. So that is it for me for today. Please, if you're interested in picking up any nonfiction, pick up The Lady from the Black Lagoon. Please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media. I will see all of you in my next video. Bye, friends.